Our Culture Pass challenge today, we are in Fort Sumner at the Bosque Redondo Memorial Site, and this place has a very sacred and special history. So, Marianne, this is the old building, this is the old visitor center, and it depicted more of the U.S. government's perspective of the Bosque Redondo, is that right? That's right. Okay, so as we know, uh, the government set this up as a reservation for the Navajo and Mescalero. Um, Tell us a little bit about how this area became a reservation and, and the, the process of that. Well, that part's a little bit sketchy in history because um, if, you, if you look around today, there are some trees mm -hmm. and some vegetation, but during that time, uh, there was not a whole lot of um, wood around trees, mm -hmm. and, but there was land. Mm -hmm. And like I told you, it was a million acre reservation, and so it was important, I think, to have, you know, just a, a large, unencumbered space of land. Uh -huh. Now, uh, when, they, when they set it up, they were expecting perhaps maybe 3,000 uh, Native Americans to come here, and uh, before long, they had over 8,000. Wow. And so uh, the, the, the space was here, mm -hmm. but the um, essentials were not here. It just became what, what the government calls at the end of it, it became the failed experiment. So this particular period of time in New Mexico history is referred to as the long walk. So what does that phrase actually mean, especially for the Navajo and the Mescalero Apache? Well, it means uh, two different things for the Mescalero Apache. Uh, or one, it means something different for the mm -hmm. Mescalero Apache. Um, they came from the Rio Dosa area, and so their pilgrimage here was about 100 miles, but uh, they went through a scorched earth campaign prior to that, get coming to this place, which uh, everything was destroyed, all their livelihood was destroyed before they came. Uh, the Navajo were uh, force marched about 450 miles. We say, 450 miles. We, say, we say long walk, but however, there were about six walks that came in. Uh, but the longest was around 450 miles. Now, another day you came from Albuquerque, which was 160 miles. I can't even imagine and, um, the drive from here and, and walking. In a car. And, three but times then they, they, they did that walk and they did it in the winter. Wow. And uh, they had to cross uh, water. Many of them couldn't swim, so many drowned uh -huh. coming across. And the stories say that when some got here, that uh, they barely had any clothing on and that uh, some had eaten their moccasin leather because of hunger. So it was a, it was a, the, the journey here itself was traumatic. Wow. Now once they got here, you're talking about four or five years of imprisonment, is that right? Somewhere around there? Mm -hmm. What was life like? I mean, I, can, I, I can't even imagine, honestly, what it must have been like, but can you give us some insight as to what life was like? Well, as, as far as we know from the, the history books, and some of it was the uh, accounts of the soldiers, Mm -hmm. uh, they said that, of course, they were trying to um, get a predictable food source, mm -hmm. you know, for the Native Americans while they were here. And so over 3,000 acres of corn was planted, but for two seasons, the cutworms took the whole, just almost the entire harvest, so that that did not work. The uh, water coming from the river was alkaline, and so they couldn't drink it, and they couldn't, they couldn't water their crops with it. So that, you know, it was, uh, it was really just kind of a day-to-day -day survival. They did bring in some beef uh, from the uh, Army had some, sh you know, not shipped in, but were driven here on trail drives. Mm -hmm. But, uh, so they gave them beef when they had it, but that wasn't always predictable. And they did ration them uh, bacon and uh, flour and sugar and coffee beans. And none of those things were items that the Navajo or the Mescaro Apache were familiar with. They didn't know anything wow. about the food. Wow. So, I mean, it really was an assimilation in, in, in so many ways to a way of life that they weren't familiar with and having to adapt. But what strikes me so much is the perseverance that people right. had. And I know that after the reservation closed down, the long walk had to be repeated. From the and when they left, they headed to Fort Defiance. And they were there, uh, I think, a little over a month getting all their supplies. And they said when they left, the uh, line of uh, Navajos was 10 miles long, leaving. 10 miles long. And each one of them gave, I mean, each one of them was given two sheep. And uh, Chief Barbancito told them 
when they got ready to leave, he said, um, you know, we have been hungry before because they had been for this entire time. Sure. Uh, he said, but do not, and he said, we'll be hungry again, mm -hmm. but he said, do not kill these sheep. He said, this is the beginning of our new flocks. And the story is that all, every single head of, uh, made it back home and, and no one killed and ate the sheep on the way. So it was a long journey home also. So for more information on the Bosque Redondo Memorial Site and the Culture Pass Challenge, head over to casa.com, click on the Style tab, and come explore history where it happened.